it was all part of a very sophisticated real estate practice known as lying. Oh boy. On Monday, Jon Stewart did a fantastic segment taking down Trump on his fraud charge, and the reaction from the right was so ridiculous <laughs> that he actually, Jon Stewart actually came out to react to it afterwards, and I'm going to get to one of the dumbest pieces of writing, to quote someone I'm going to quote to, a quote in a, in a bit here, one of the dumbest pieces of writing I've ever read. So first to properly understand where this all began. This is, I'm not going to show you the full segment, of course, it's like 12 minutes long, but I'm going to show you a, a portion of this segment that gives you an idea of what Jon Stewart was arguing in the piece. What did Trump actually do to earn this penalty? Well, it turns out that for a decade, whenever Trump wanted to get a loan or make a deal, he would illegally inflate the value of his real estate. For instance, suggesting that his 11,000 square foot penthouse was a 30,000 square foot penthouse. I guess somehow including the sky in the calculation. <laughs> we all do it. I mean, in my license, I'm not listed as 5'7". You know, <laughs> I'm, I'm listed as 30,000 square feet. <laughs> And the, that's, thank you. And the attorney general of New York knew that Trump's property values were inflated because when it came time to pay taxes, Trump undervalued the very same properties. It was all part of a very sophisticated real estate practice known as lying. So that gives you a good idea of what was being argued in that piece. Donald Trump, this is already well known, I've discussed this on this very channel, Donald Trump artificially inflated his own assets, including tri almost tripling the real estate of his place that didn't exist. He didn't have a 30,000 square foot penthouse and then devalued it when he came to paying taxes. This is where we get to the reaction from the right. Now, again, this isn't just randos online. These are massive leaders in the conservative movement and a massive newspaper attempting to make an argument that doesn't make any damn sense. Of course, because they're clowns. Tim Poole here with his argument, did uh, John Stewart commit fraud when he sold his penthouse for $17.5 New York listed its market value at $1.8 million, an estimate or assessed value at around $800,000. Uh, assessed value is when it comes to property taxes. Who did he defraud? I am shocked, shocked. John Stewart did not invent square footage. The assessed value is out of his hands. I'm going to get to a little deeper on that specifically, but this has nothing to do with what Donald Trump did, where he lied about how much square footage his properties had. This is clearly very different. So this led to a New York Post article, <laughs> John Stewart found to have overvalued his New York City home by 829% after slamming Trump's civil case as not victimless. So before I even get to the piece, I just got to quote Jordan Wiseman here because I laughed reading this tweet. This is an article about how Stewart sold his apartment for more than its estimated market value. It is truly, I can say without hesitation, one of the dumbest pieces of published writing I have ever encountered. So here, here's the piece. Uh, I, I, got, I got a few choice highlights here. The, this is the, the very first um, par paragraph. Right, a comedian, John Stewart, ranted this week that, jo that Donald Trump's civil real estate case overvaluing his properties was not victimless. Yet when it came to his own home, Stewart benefited from, I highlighted similar here, similar inflation. Similar doing a lot of heavy lifting here <laughs> because John Stewart did not make up square footage. I... <laughs> This is so, the, the, look, I know the bar is low I, for a place like New York Post, but man, th this can't even meet their bar. Th this, this is so absolutely insane to attempt to argue. Uh, I, I don't know how this made it to publish. Like uh, how, aren't there some, some standards? And actually we're going to, this article was updated, apparently, later after it was posted. Uh, I'm going to guess what they put in, because Jon Stewart reacted to it. I'll get to his reaction. But the, they even go on to undercut the whole piece, the, this, whole, this whole argument, in their own piece. 
But they go on to write here, to further his point, Stewart argued that money isn't infinite. A loan that goes to the liar that doesn't go to someone else who's giving a more honest evaluation. So the system becomes incentivized for corruption. Stewart also contended that failing to declare a higher market value on a property while paying taxes based on a lower assessed value constitutes fraudulent behavior. Donald Trump made up square footage. What do you not understand about the obvious differences here? This has nothing to do with assessed value compared to the square footage <laughs> that was invented by Donald Trump. So they, this is the, I have to imagine, it's possible this was in the original piece, I don't know, but the piece was updated after uh, Stuart reacted to it, and they included his tweet in here, but they go on to write themselves. The difference between Stuart and Trump's cases is that a judge ruled, a judge ruled, it's on the paperwork, a judge ruled that Trump sometimes exaggerated to lenders about how big his properties were, including the square footage of his Trump Tower apartment. That's a massive difference between the two that is tucked in near the end of this article. <laughs> it's just like, how can anybody possibly trust anything they read from these clowns? So John Stewart goes on to react saying, oh my God, I've been caught doing something not remotely similar to Trump. I guess all I need to do now is start a fraud college, steal classified documents, ba bankrupt casinos, pay hush money, grab, you know what, <laughs> discriminate in housing, cheat at golf, and foment insurrection, and you'll revere me. Absolutely fantastic reply to this insanity. And, and to properly end on here, circling back to uh, Tim Pool. Ben Dreyfus has this thread on this. Tim Pool apparently doesn't understand how property taxes work. So Tim Pool reacted to John Stewart's tweet that I just showed you, saying, uh, "You sold a property in New York valued at 1.8 million to someone for 17.5 million, and they lost 4 million because of it. And you paid taxes on a valuation of 748k. When it comes time, when it came time to pay taxes, he undervalued his property." So Ben Dreyfus goes on to discuss or explain. The idea that people who sell their house for a price above the assessed value should call the government and be like, hey, apparently it was worth more than you thought, <laughs> so could you please recalculate for back years and send me a new bill? Is hilarious. People are like, but it sold for so much more than it was assessed. Take that complaint up with the assessor. There are, in fact, totally non-corrupt reasons why assessments sometimes do fall way behind actual true market value. But regardless, it has nothing to do with Stewart. So... And he goes on to get even into deeper details about New York City specifically, showing that uh, assessed value for condo buildings with 4 to 10 units cannot go up by more than 8% each year or more than 30% over a five-year period unless you did renovations. Therefore, it may take several years for assessed value to adjust to a large increase in market value. This explains why assessed value goes up, uh, goes up even when market value goes down. Assessed value for condo buildings with 11 or more units have to be phased in 20% each over a five-year period, so it may take several years for the assessed value to adjust to large increases or decreases in market value. And he goes deeper on this, and, you know, essentially, should a wealthy individual like John Stewart have to have paid more taxes? Yeah, yes, he should have. But that's not his fault. That's the way the system works in New York City. That's the way the system is. So... There's no fraud being committed here because there at no point is John Stewart lying about the property. He's not saying he's not making up rooms that don't exist. He's not making up square footage for the property and then devaluing it when it comes to paying taxes. The property is what it is. It's assessed at what it's assessed at. The market value is what it is. This is standard. Donald Trump lied about square footage. <laughs> How do you not understand the differences? And of course, they understand the difference. The people, Tim Pool has to. Tim Pool's a propagandist. I, I'm sure he understands the difference. He has to understand the difference. But, but th th this, the fact that this made it to the New York Post, like, who, who wrote this? Mary Kay Jacob, absolute clown. The, the fact that this made it to the New York Post, and again, low bar, New York Post. Still, it's a newspaper. It's a large media institution. It is so, I don't know, it's just so beyond the pale. There really are no standards anymore when it comes to any of these clowns. But this shows you just, when there is nothing for them to argue, they'll just make it up. There's no point ever taking these idiots seriously.